Hi again, this is Andy, KE4GKP, and welcome back to the Ham Whisperer and Lesson 28 in the Technician Operator Element 2 exam course. In this lesson, we're going to go over the T8B questions, which covers amateur satellite operation. The T8B section deals with questions concerning Doppler shift, basic orbits, and operating protocols for satellites. All right, if you're ready, let's get started. Who may be the control operator of a station communicating through an amateur satellite or space station? The answer is any amateur whose license privileges allow them to transmit on the satellite uplink frequency, which makes sense. So essentially, if you're a technician class operator, you can be the control operator of a station communicating with a satellite if the uplink frequency is within your privileges. So any amateur whose license privileges allow them to transmit on the satellite uplink frequency can communicate through an amateur satellite or space station. How much transmitter power should be used on the uplink frequency of an amateur satellite or space station? The answer on the exam is the minimum amount of power needed to complete the contact, which is a familiar theme as far as power and amateur radio operation goes. Now, you always use the minimum amount of power necessary to complete the contact, whether it's a satellite or any other communication on amateur frequencies. The minimum amount of power needed to complete the contact. Which of the following are provided by satellite tracking programs? All right, the answer is an all of the above answer on the exam. Maps showing the real-time position of the satellite track over the Earth, the time, azimuth, and elevation of the start, maximum altitude, and end of a pass, and the apparent frequency of the satellite transmission, including effects of Doppler shift. Now, it's a lot of stuff. However, just know that pretty much nowadays you can get almost any satellite tracking program free off the Internet, and it will give you all of that information. So... Which of the following are provided by satellite tracking programs? All of it. Which amateur stations may make contact with an amateur station on the International Space Station using 2 meter and 70 centimeter band amateur radio frequencies? All right, the answer is any amateur holding a technician or higher class license. So right now, pretty much any amateur who is newly licensed can talk uh, to the space station using 2 meter and 70 centimeter band frequencies. Now this is a legacy question uh, from the days of when there was a novice class license, which there are still some novice class amateurs around who just haven't upgraded yet, so which is, makes this uh, question still applicable. But if you have a technician class license, you can talk to the International Space Station. What is a satellite beacon? Well, a satellite beacon is a transmission from a space station that contains information about a satellite, and that's the answer on the exam. Generally, this is just an identification. However, sometimes it can carry information that's important to whoever is coordinating the satellite. But the nice thing for you and me is that they let you know when the satellite's in range. So if you're looking for it, sometimes the beacon will give you a hint that it's coming into range. So a satellite beacon is a transmission from a space station that contains information about a satellite. Which of the following are inputs to a satellite tracking program? The answer are the Keplerian elements. And these Keplerian elements are basically the parameters necessary to find a satellite's position in space. And we need to be really, really thankful for computers because now you can just plug these numbers in and it'll spit out where the satellite is. Um, it, it's a, Keplerian elements are kind of a complicated thing and I can't go into them to be honest with you. But be thankful for computers because once you plug them in, you'll know where the satellite is. So which of the following are inputs to satellite tracking program? The answer are, is the Keplerian elements. With regard to satellite communications, what is Doppler shift? Well, Doppler shift is an observed change in signal frequency caused by relative motion between the satellite and the Earth station. And that's the answer in the exam, and I know that's a mouthful. And essentially what this is is Doppler effect. And for those of us who have blocked out our high school physics, the Doppler effect was always illustrated by a fire truck with the siren blaring coming at you. And as that fire truck was coming at you, the sound of that siren seemed to increase in pitch or got higher in pitch. Now as it passed you and started going away, the, the pitch of that fire engine would start to go down. Well, the same thing happens with radio waves. So as the satellite approaches your position, the radio waves are compressed, giving it a slightly higher frequency as compared to when it, it's traveling away from you and the frequency shifts a little bit lower. And if you're going to work a satellite, you're going to need to adjust for that a little bit. But just remember, Doppler shift is an observed change in signal frequency caused by relative motion between the satellite and the Earth station. What is meant by the statement that a satellite is operating in mode UV? Well, what it means is the satellite uplink is in 70 centimeters and the downlink is in 2 meter band. 
Now, so essentially the uplink is in UHF, the U, and the downlink is in VHF or V. And so satellites and repeaters don't necessarily have to receive and transmit in the same band. And satellites break this up a, a lot. Um, this one's got an uplink in UHF, this one's got a downlink in VHF, thus the 70 centimeter uplink, 2 meter downlink. There's several different modes like this when dealing with satellites, however, this is the only one you need to know for the exam. What causes spin fading when referring to satellite signals? Well, spin fading is caused by the rotation of the satellite and its antennas. So as that satellite is spinning around, the antennas are changing direction and doing a bunch of other stuff, so sometimes it can cause some fading. The thing to remember this one is rotation and spin, and this is the, of all the possible answers, this is the only answer on the exam for this question that has anything to do with spinning. What do the initials LEO tell you about an amateur satellite? All right, what LEO tells you is that the satellite is in a low Earth orbit. LEO, low Earth orbit. What is a commonly used method of sending signals to and from a digital satellite? Well, the key word in this question is digital satellite. So the digital mode you're looking for is FM packet. So in packet radio, information is sent in packets or bursts, so transmissions are relatively short and carry a lot of information. This allows a, a lot more reliable reception and also a, a lot more traffic can be passed on the satellite so it's not tied up with long voice or other types of signals. And there's a relatively short amount of time that that satellite will be in range, so packet radio is a pretty good way to, to talk to a satellite. And that's it for the review, and now it's time for the T8B quiz. Uh, take out a piece of paper, number 1 through 11. When you're done with the quiz, be sure to stop by handwhisper.com and check your answers. Um, as always, I'm going to go through the questions fairly quickly, so if you need more time, just pause the video. And let's get started with the quiz. Question 1. Who may be the control operator of a station communicating through an amateur satellite or space station? A. Only an amateur extra class operator. B. A general class licensee or higher licensee who has a satellite operator certification. C. Only an amateur extra class operator who is an AMSAT member. Or D. An amateur whose license privileges allow them to transmit on the satellite uplink frequency. Question 2. How much transmitter power should be used on the uplink frequency of an amateur satellite or space station? A. The maximum power of your transmitter. B. The minimum amount of power needed to complete the contact. C. No more than half the rating of your linear amplifier. Or D. Never more than one watt. Question 3. Which of the following are provided by satellite tracking programs? A. Maps showing the real-time position of the satellite track over the Earth. B. The time, azimuth, and elevation of the start, maximum altitude, and end of a pass. C. The apparent frequency of the satellite transmission, including effects of Doppler shift. Or D. All of these answers are correct. Question 4. Which amateur stations may make contact with an amateur station on the International Space Station using 2 meter and 70 centimeter band amateur radio frequencies? A. Only members of amateur radio clubs at NASA facilities. B. Any amateur holding a technician or higher class license. C. Only the astronaut's family members who are hams. Or D. You cannot talk to the International Space Station on amateur radio frequencies. Question 5. What is a satellite beacon? A. The primary transmit antenna on the satellite. B. An indicator light that shows where to point your antenna. C. A reflective surface on the satellite. Or D. A transmission from a space station that contains information about a satellite. Question 6. Which of the following are inputs to a satellite tracking program? A. The weight of the satellite. B. The Camplarian elements. C. The last observed time of zero Doppler shift. Or D. All of these answers are correct. Question 7. With regard to satellite communications, what is Doppler shift? A. A change in the satellite orbit. B. A mode where the satellite receives signals on one band and transmits on another. C. An observed change in signal frequency caused by relative motion between the satellite and the Earth station. Or D. A special digital communications mode for some satellites. Question 8. What is meant by the statement that a satellite is operating in mode UV? A. The satellite uplink is in the 15 meter band and the downlink is in the 10 meter band. B. The satellite uplink is in the 70 centimeter band and the downlink is in the 2 meter band. C. The satellite operates using ultraviolet frequencies or D, the satellite frequencies are usually variable. Question 9. What causes spin fading when referring to satellite signals? A. Circular polarized noise interference radiated from the sun 
B. Rotation of the satellite and its antennas. C. Doppler shift of the received signal. Or D. Interfering signals within the satellite uplink band. Question 10. What do the initials LEO tell you about an amateur satellite? A. The satellite battery is in low energy operation mode. B. The satellite is performing a lunar ejection orbit maneuver. C. The satellite is in a low Earth orbit. Or D. The satellite uses light emitting optics. Question 11. What is a commonly used method of sending signals to and from a digital satellite? A. USB AFSK. B. PSK31. C. FM packet. Or D. WSJT. And that concludes lesson 28 in the T8B section of the exam. Now that you're done, be sure to stop by hemwhisper.com and check your answers. And until next time in lesson 29, this is Andy, KE4GKP, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.